Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80cc shifter cart build series. So in the last video, I went and I picked up a go-kart. I found one for a really cheap price, $250. It's basically a perfect base for this project. It's got everything I need to get started, but it is gonna need a lot of modifications. If you guys saw the last video, you know, uh, I crashed the go-kart really hard the first day riding it, and I did some damage to the go-kart. Today we're gonna take a closer look at the go-kart. We're gonna see what it's actually gonna need for this project and uh, what we can keep and actually make work. So without further ado, let's take a look at it. Alright guys, so I got the go-kart inside. I'm gonna take a closer look at it. It's got some issues and um, it's got some good things going for it too. So, so it's pretty much your standard go-kart. Um, it's obviously a kid's go-kart. First thing I noticed right off the bat is that the wheels are out of alignment. Uh, this one is pointed out. Well, this one is pointed straight. Now, you guys saw me crash it in the last video. So I did bend this spindle. Um, seems to be steering just fine like this now that we kind of bent it back but uh, this thing got bent here kind of got pressed pretty hard so I'm gonna have to replace those um, but as it sits it's pretty complete the pull start I keep having problems with I fix it and then the spring keeps screwing up so it does have a Predator 212 motor on it so it does have a live axle but as you can see when I spin this tire the axle spins but that tire doesn't spin. So the axle issue is the first thing I want to dive into. I want to figure out what's going on with that uh, and establish whether this axle is going to work or if I'm going to have to replace the whole rear axle. For this project so far I have a bunch of ideas. Uh, I'm not sure how much it's going to change throughout the project but I know one thing for sure is this frame has to get cut and stretched longer. So the frame's going to get chopped, it's going to get stretched. It's also going to get an 80cc two-stroke engine off of my 1987 KDX-80. So the KDX-80 that I have, it's Kawasaki and it came with a um, air-cooled 80cc two-stroke engine. So it's gonna work good for our purposes because I don't have to deal with a cooling system or anything like that. As you can see, I'm sitting in this car now, it's super small. So the seat needs to get moved back further. So because it's a two-stroke engine, it has a pipe on the front. So it's gonna need some more space between the back of the seat and the engine. Also, the axle is going to have to be moved back further, so the angle of the chain, since it's a motorcycle engine, um, can maintain like a backwards angle. So this is a KDX-80. Um, this is a little bike I have. Things really fast for a little 80 bike, and uh, it makes about 16 horsepower. It's, as you see, it's got the pipe in the front, which requires a little extra room. And also, here's the countershaft sprocket. And um, because of the shift lever right below it, the chain has to run at a backwards angle. Now, it looks like it can run at more of a downward angle than it's at right now, but there's a limit. You know, I can't run the chain straight down from the motor to the axle, and I definitely cannot run it forward because of uh, the stator cover and the stator that's right there. Okay, let's take this tire off and see what we're dealing with here.
Okay guys, so we got the tire off. As you can see, this is just doing that. Maybe, maybe this is supposed to do that. I don't know. You gotta bear with me because I never had a go-kart before. I've never worked on a go-kart. Um, I've just kind of wanted to do this. So I'm gonna learn as I go. So if you're watching this going like, this idiot doesn't even know how the hubs attached to the axle. I have no idea. I think it's like a keyway or something, but I'm pretty sure both hubs are supposed to spin when the axle spins. So I'm gonna investigate this further. So my first uh, instinct is to try to hammer this off, although I don't think that's right. I guess that is right. So, this hub did come off. Uh, bearings are shot. Bearings are falling out. Uh, yeah, wheel bearings totally shot in this hub. The other thing, I'm noticing there's no keyway on this side, so maybe this tire is supposed to just free float. But it kind of begs the question, why would you put a live axle on something uh, if it's not going to drive both tires, this one's just going to, the axle's just going to spin in the hub. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Makes me wonder whether this rear axle is going to work or not because I definitely want Posi when I swap to the new motor. So I went to go put this back on and realized something very weird. The studs from the hub do not fit through the rim like they were before. And then if you let air out of the tire, Oh, come on. If you let air out of the tire, the rim squishes together. It's like a two-piece rim I get. This is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. So I was going to take the other rear wheel off and see what's going on with that one because this one has like some type of collar. It's hard for you to see probably in there. It has some type of collar in here. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's how this wheel is attached to the axle um, but this side of the axle has a much bigger nut than the other side so I don't have a socket that big I'm gonna have to get a socket that fits that axle if I want to take it off right now I'm leaning towards replacing this rear axle looks pretty old it's kind of a weird system um, if any of you are familiar with this system let me know in the comments I don't know why one side of the axle is bigger than the other side. I'm not sure why it has a live axle if one of the tires still doesn't spin. It doesn't really make any sense to me. So another thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to change this seat to more of like a race seat. Uh, I'm going to put it mounted in the center. I'm going to move the steering wheel to the center. Um, that way you're not crushed over against this bar the way it is now when you sit in it. You're like smushed against this side rail. and. Uh, this is obviously for two little kids so now the dirt bike engine obviously has a transmission so I'm gonna have to install a shift lever and right now I'm undecided between clutch pedal or mounting the clutch lever on the shifter I think I would rather a clutch pedal so that's probably the direction I'm gonna go with it but we'll figure that out down the road so I think that's gonna be all for today guys I wasn't gonna do very much to this thing just kind of give it a closer look let you guys see the ins and outs of it kind of figure out what's going on with it, why that tire is not spinning. And uh, yeah, I'm really still not sure what's going on with that, but, but yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to change the rear axle, which is not a big deal. It's something I kind of plan on doing anyway, but maybe not. If I can get that other tire to uh, spin, then maybe we'll leave that axle. All right, I'll see you guys next time on the 80cc shifter cart build. And uh, if you didn't see the first part in the series, Go back and watch it because the crash is pretty epic. Later.